I wanted to say thanks to everyone who took the time to watch the last couple of videos that I had been kind of focusing on the Great Smoky Mountains area. I have a couple more to go on that, and then I'll move on. This story, well, first let me uh, backtrack just a second and say I researched and looked and tried to find any thing that I could find on David Harrington, who I included in my last video. He was found deceased in the Great Smoky Mountains. He was from Florida. He had, his family had reported him missing, but they had no idea that he was in the Smoky Mountains. They didn't know why he had traveled there. The park and the police that investigated wrote this off as a suicide, the same as they did with this Michael Cochini, who was also found deceased in the same area. Both men had suffered gunshots, is it possible that these men were not, um, did not commit suicide, but rather could have been victims? And the park police, the park rangers, the local police wrote it off as suicide, announced it as suicide in a t an attempt to sway people away from feeling like there could be a danger out there, that there could be someone out there targeting men. I could be wrong. They may have the evidence that shows. What got me about David Harrington's case, he had pulled off in kind of a roundabout lane. Uh, it's just kind of a, a lane that's a temporary place to move over to let other people go around or to turn. It's not a place where people normally park. It could have been that he did park there on purpose so that people would look for him. I question why did he not commit this act against himself, if that's what he did, inside of his truck where he would definitely have been found. Why did he travel 250 yards from his truck to do this in the woods where he would be exposed to animal activity and the possibility of not being found for a while? I do love the Smoky Mountains. I do enjoy going there. I enjoy the beauty of this area. I prefer the peace, the more what is known as the peaceful side of the Smokies. I don't want to sway anyone away from visiting there. I just, I would just say, be careful if you're going hiking. If you're not an experienced hiker, or even if you are. I always would say rec I recommend that you go with somebody else. But there was one woman who went missing whose name I couldn't find very much at all about her. I was very shocked because she's even been featured on one of the, I think maybe it was Dateline. I could be wrong about that. It, it could have been one of the others. But her parents were interviewed, and there's been videos and, and there's stories out there about her, but very little when you look her up as a missing person. And so I was surprised that she wasn't included, and I was surprised that her name didn't get a lot more coverage, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feature her in my next story. These two women that I'm featuring in this video, um, one of the women was very, very skilled hiker, was, a, was part of a hiking club and groups and, and was well known for her abilities. The other had come there with her daughter. She was more of a hiker on what would be called the easier trails. But this story is about a woman whose name was Mitzi Susan Clements. Mitzi Sue Clements, and she went by the name Susan. Now, she had come to the Smoky Mountains with her daughter, and they were hiking. And she went missing. She, her daughter had gone on ahead to hike to Klingman's Dome. 
and she told her daughter that she would meet her at the car in the parking lot or in the parking lot. And when her daughter finished her hike and returned, her mother was not there. She began to walk around and look for her. And after a while, when she couldn't find her anywhere, she contacted the park. And this is where this story picks up. It was a rainy and cool day when 53-year-old Mitzi Susan Clements and her daughter went hiking in the Smoky Mountains. The pair went hiking near Clingman's Dome, which is the highest elevation in the park. Near the end of their hike, the daughter went on ahead to climb up to Clingman's Dome Tower since she was faster, planning to meet her mother back at the parking lot, but she never appeared. She was last seen about 5 p.m. that day. The search lasted about a week, with over 175 professionals searching the surrounding area. Um, the weather during the first few days made an adequate search impossible. Any scent the dogs picked up would have been lost with the rain and wind. This is a running theme with the Smoky Mountains. The ground was muddy and difficult to walk around, and there was just no uh, sense for the dogs to pick up. Um, the search ended about a week later on October the 2nd, 2018. Her body was found in dense vegetation about two miles west of Clingman Stone parking lot and less than a mile from the Appalachian Trail. There are many trail intersections where her body was found, making it a common place for people to get lost or turned around. The cause of her death was hypothermia. Clements was not dressed for the weather that night, which reached down into the 40s. She was only wearing a light sweater with leggings and nylon workout pants. The main mystery of the case is how she got lost and what happened to her during those last hours. It is, it is assumed that when her daughter hiked to the Clemens Dome Tower, Clements reached an intersection of trails that she was unable to navigate. She began to wander, and as the temperatures continued to drop and rain began to fall, she probably became more disoriented. Hypothermia probably began to set in, making her confused. Unable to think clearly, she stumbled into thick vegetation and was unable to move due to exhaustion. She was found a week later. There were no signs of foul play or an animal attack. More than 500 miles of trails were searched and another 10 square miles of off-trail landscape was also explored. The weather was very damp and wet and foggy. A short break in the weather allowed searchers to place her body in a stretcher that was then hoisted out of the forest by the Tennessee Army National Guard Black Hawk helicopter. Though only about two miles from the parking area, the woman's body was hidden in the dense rhododendron thickets of the Huggins Creek drainage. Rocky Mountains National Park's landscape and heavy vegetation can make these types of searches very complicated. The park is rippled with drainages that become eroded by the creeks. The mountain flanks in many places feature cliffs that are steep and cut with crevices. To be found two miles from the parking lot. Now, I don't know how far they were from the parking lot when the daughter and the mother parted ways. The daughter said that she was going to go on ahead and climb to the top of Clingman's Dome, which is quite a very steep climb, even though once you get up into onto the walkway leading out to the dome itself, it's all paved. Uh, it's still very steep, and for somebody who maybe is, has already been hiking for a long period of time, maybe she, the mother was tired and didn't want to make that long climb up to the top. So I don't know how far 
from where she was found, they parted ways, or how far from the parking area where she was headed. Whatever happened after her and the daughter went their separate ways is still a mystery. I don't think it was believed that her case was anything foul play or anything like that. It was just a case of someone who got, you know, turned around on the trail and became lost and for whatever reason couldn't be found in those days. I, I'm, I mean, the weather played a big role in that, like it always seems to do in these searches in the Smoky Mountains. Seems almost like every time someone goes missing, the weather takes a turn for the worse and it makes it hard for searchers to go out there and search and for dogs to pick up a scent. And like I said earlier, the Smoky Mountains is a beautiful place to visit. I don't want anyone to get the wrong impression on these videos that I'm trying to sway people away from going there. But just any with any travel, uh, especially in any kind of parks or any kind of forest or anything like that to just use caution and make sure you have someone with you or that you are in contact with other people and they know your schedule pretty well and um you know have have water have gear with you to um, sustain a few days in case you were to become lost now um i'm going to move on to the next story this is this story of the death of uh, Jenny Bennett. Susan J. Bennett disappeared June 1, 2015. Her body was found June 8 in the Lester Prong area of Greenbrier above campsite number 31 in the Great Smoky Mountains. This has been revised April the 20. Of 2021. Susan Jenny Bennett, age 62, was an experienced hiker in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and a member of the Smoky Mountain Hiking Club. She also wrote two fiction books based in the Smokies. Jenny also wrote an ongoing blog called Endless Streams and Forests in which she documented many of her hiking and camping trips. Jenny Bennett died near Porter's Creek from hypothermia after a toxic dose of diphenhydramine that she had taken, apparently, in an attempt to commit suicide. She'd been missing a week before her disappearance was reported and a search began. Officials found her body about four miles up the trail in the Lester Prong area, of the Greenbrier in the Great Smoky Mountains Park. The authorities were convinced that Jenny had killed herself in the wilderness, but some of her friends say that just was not the case. On March the 31st, 2015, Jenny decided to leave North Carolina and move to St. Johnsbury, Vermont. She wanted to be closer to her sister in Massachusetts. Those who knew her described her as being excited about the move. She had located a home to buy. There were few hikers tougher than Jenny Bennett. She took on many challenges, and her favorite challenge was the Great Smoky Mountains. She had hiked many routes that most hikers didn't know about. She developed a knee problem in 2012, in which the knee would periodically dislocate itself and she would have to force it back into place. Ultimately, the knee problem became unbearable and she concluded that an operation to correct the condition would be required. Nonetheless, she kept on with big hikes as long as she could. After her mentor, Charlie Clay Bund, passed away in 2015, Jenny organized an outing on March the 22nd, 2015 to pass the Jump Off on the Smokies Boulevard Trail. 
Jenny organized an outing on March the 22nd, 2015, to disperse ashes of her mentor. Um, she made it from Newfound Gap to the beginning of the descent of the Boulevard Trail, but her knee gave out and she could not continue. She returned to her car and back to Silva, while the remainder of the group continued on and continued the memorial. This was tough for her because she had wanted to be the one to disperse the ashes of her beloved mentor. For many years, Jenny did off-trail hikes in the wilderness, and often she went on her own. Her blog had its last post on May the 27th about hiking in the Balsam Mountain area. She had, an unde she had an undeniable sadness about leaving the mountains she loved so dearly. She was having a hard time saying goodbye to the Smokies and the memories that it held for her. Her friend and fellow hiker said at the time that she was the most experienced off-trail hiker that they knew. She knew the back country of the Smokies better than anybody. This was absolutely her passion, exploring all of the creeks and slopes. Um, Jenny was a really strong hiker, but could also talk about off-trail exploration for hours and hours. Now, the disappearance and death of Jenny Bennett. She was supposed to have moved out of the house in Silva on June the 1st. A prospective renter who came to the house found boxes but no trace of her or her car. Her landlord and her brother contacted authorities and reported her missing to park rangers on June the 7th. Her car was quickly located at the Porter's Trail Head um, on June the 7th and her body was found at 9.30 the next day on June the 8th. Um, her body was found just downstream from the first crossing on the main way above the camp campsite. The autopsy report from the Sevier County Medical Examiner's Office released September of 2015 concluded that Jenny had died of environmental hypothermia due to cold exposure from partial submersion in the creek. She also had bruises on her right hip and elbow consistent with a fall. However, she did not have any internal or skeletal trauma. In addition, the coroner reported that she had a toxic level of antihistamine diphenhydramine in her bloodstream, which was considered a significant factor in her death. A friend and fellow hiker said that she had emailed him on May the 26th about coming to visit her and go hiking in Vermont. All communication with her suggested that she was looking forward to the future. She was looking forward to moving. It's something that we had talked about quite a bit and she was looking forward to exploring new trails. Other friends recognized no warning signs that she was depressed or other than being sad that she was having to leave the Smokies but I'm sure that just like and I'm thinking they were probably thinking the same thing she could always come back to visit you know she had friends in the area one of her friends Clayton Carver who had hiked with her many times um, said that there was nothing indicating her behavior that she was depressed or had made any kind of plans for anything other than her future. They had been emailing each other in the days leading up to it. And she did seem to be a little bit moody, but that was not probably only because of all the packing and trying to get everything together. The only thing that anyone says here is this guy named Ed Fleming, who was a longtime member of the Smoky Mountain Hiking Club, said that Jenny was having some issues with serving as editor of their newsletter and that she had decided to resign. Well, 
If she was planning to move away, she probably didn't see any point in continuing to be the editor of a paper that was about an area that she was no longer going to be living in. Um, the death of Jenny Bennett is very disturbing and sad. She seemed to be very optimistic about starting a new life in Vermont, but she was sad to be leaving the Smokies behind, and it was sad. Was she sad enough to take a toxic overdose of an antihistamine? Jenny began um, hiking the Smoky Mountains in the 1980s when she was living in Knoxville, Tennessee. She later moved to Silva. She lived in Asheville, North Carolina for a while, and then she later moved to Silva, where she was living at the time that this happened. Her plan was to uh, move from this uh, the Smoky Mountain areas to be closer to her sister. And a lot of people believe that, the, that she was just putting on this act of happiness about moving and that she took her own life by taking this toxic dose of diphenhydramine her body was found sitting upright in a seated position with her head laying back on rocks as though she had just sat down. It's possible that the injury to her knee had caused her to not be able to really get up and walk back to her campsite and that she just sat there knowing that hypothermia was going to take over eventually. She wasn't reported missing for seven days from the time that she left to go on this camp. Uh, camping trip when she didn't show up to meet with movers her brother started to search for her and this is when he reported her missing so to this day it's unknown whether she, her intention was to go out there for one final hike before moving or if she went out there for her final hike uh, of all um, I tend to lean toward the possibility that this could have been an accidental overdose of diphenhydramine. She may have become so drowsy and woozy from this that she just couldn't get her bearings to get up and get to moving. An injury, there were bruising on her hip and arm and it's possible that she'd fallen. Maybe she, you know, the diphenhydramine caused her to fall and she just gave up the hypothermia overtook her. I, I don't know what, what other people believe, but that's what I think. Um, but the question is, did they find the diphenhydramine? Was it in her tent? Had she taken it earlier? Maybe her intention was to go to sleep, and she had taken this diphenhydramine and then went out for one last walk around the area, and maybe that was when she fell and couldn't get back up. Her friends say that this has left them perplexed, that they thought that she was very happy to be moving, looking forward to new adventures, had been in contact with them about possibly coming to visit her when she got settled. And this has tortured us, said one of her friends. For all of us who knew her, it's something we've spent a lot of time talking about. I've accepted that I'll never have any real certainty about what happened and why. I'll wrap this story up by reading this memorial, memorial of Jenny Bennett. Smoky Mountain Hiking Club life member and author Jenny Bennett died while hiking alone in the Greenbrier area of the Smokies. On Monday, June 8, 2015, her body was found in Porter's Creek. The exact date and time of her death is unknown, and the events leading up to her death. It's likely that we will never know the truth of what really happened. We, knew, we do know that Jenny died in her favorite place in the world, said her brother Peter. The National Park Service issued a press release stating that the Sevier County Medical Examiner concluded that Jenny died of environmental hypothermia due to partial exposure. Jenny had taken a substantial amount of diphenhydramine that was a toxic level 
and they concluded that Jenny may have intentionally taken her own life, although the official cause of death was environmental hypothermia. Susan Jennifer Bennett, a native of Arlington, Virginia, moved to Knoxville and became a member of the hiking club in 1983. Jenny left the area for two decades, living in Massachusetts. After her longtime companion and she split in March of 2009, Jenny moved to Brevard, North Carolina in 2009. So to conclude this video, I'll just say that one of her friends wrote about her in a, a memorial. Let us soothe our sadness by realizing that beyond the hurt of this tragedy and loss, a deep beauty can be found that she departed in the place that was most sacred to her. As they were during her lifetime, Jenny's heart and soul will forever remain an inseparable part of the Smokies. I will feel them and be inspired by them every time I enter the park. I'll see her smiling face in the rhododendron thickets, and I'll sense her positive attitude in the frigid rain, and I wish I had joined her more often on her adventures. Thanks for watching.